Hello everyone, welcome. Today we have a very special video, our annual room tour. In this video, we'll give you a full list of every species we keep under our care as of 2024. This is part one of two. In this video, you'll see spiny ants, bull ants, and pony ants. We apologize for the wait on this video. We just got a new camera after doing all the filming and decided to refilm a few parts for this video. But without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have one of the largest and most well known Polyrhachis species here in Australia, the Polyrhachis Ammon. This species has some striking colours, having metallic gold covering its abdomen and thorax and a completely black head. This species is a generalist and does well in many environments. Whether it's dense bush or on a city path, they are able to thrive. Here we have a very unique species, the Polyrhachis damali. Instead of being gold like most spiny ants, they are a stunning silver. We have had this queen for quite a while now, and she has made an appearance in a couple of videos. However, she still doesn't have workers. Every time she gets larvae, they always seem to die before they spin their cocoons. Although, we are still hopeful. This is Polyrhachis mojibergi, a small species for Polyrhachis. We're still unsure on this species' care, as every time we've tried to house them in a test tube alone, they vigorously pull on the cotton and usually end up dying. But if we house them with an outworld, they usually move out of the test tube and into there. Perhaps for this queen we can try a naturalistic setup. Now this is what I would consider one of the prettiest polys, the Polyrhachis ornata. It has gold wrapping around its thorax and a silver abdomen. This species is decently rare, living mostly in uninhabited areas preferring bushland over suburban areas. Our queen is about to get her first worker, with a cocoon that is just about ready to hatch. This is a Polyrhachis femorata. It is a relatively large poly, being around 1.3cm in length. They are shiny black with pale legs. We caught this queen all the way back in April, and she took her time to lay. As a couple days after recording this, she got her first worker which means it took her 8 whole months to get workers, which is a long time for Polyrhachis. Here we have the Polyrhachis pyrene, a highly polygynous species. We have found wild colonies with upwards of 16 queens, so we decided we would try with a 4 queen colony, and they have been going really well, with a large and healthy brood pile. This species is nocturnal, foraging strictly at night, which helps them avoid competition with most other polyrhachis that forage in the daylight hours. This is a giant among spiny ants, dwarfing even the Ammon. This is Polyrhachis CF Templi, a 2cm giant. This species is found within trees, sharing the adaptation with Femorata, but unlike them, this species basically just forages in the canopies only being found when the tyrannical queens fly down in search of a mate. In fact, we have never seen a wild worker of this species before, even though we caught them in our area. Another dazzling poly, the Polyrhachis rififima. This species has a large variety of colours, from its ruby legs to its metallic golden gaster. It really is an incredible sight. We have had this colony for almost a year now, and she has done quite well, having three workers and a large brood pile. And our final spiny ant, the Polyrhachis hookery. This species is very small, only being about 7mm in length. Although they make up for this in looks, they are a metallic green with bright red legs, and sometimes a golden abdomen. This queen is caring for some larvae that look almost ready to spin their cocoons. Now we have our bull ants. 
starting with a desert specialist, Mimesia gradiosa. This bright red species comes from Western Australia, and it is one of the only Mimesia species able to survive in the desert. This queen recently got her larvae to spin their cocoons. You can tell that they have only just spun their cocoons, as there is sand protruding from them. Here we have an undescribed species, the Mimesia cf Midas. This species is rare, being found in the high parts of New South Wales down to Wollongong, in dense, undisturbed forests. This species is also very difficult to keep. Ours is still yet to lay eggs even after having her for several months, and all the other people that we have talked to that have the same species have had the same issue. She is a very beautiful queen with her red colours with slight black panning on her head. Looking closer with our macro lens, you can see she is missing a bit of her right mandible. However, it doesn't affect her quality of life. It is a reminder of how the imperfection of nature adds to the beauty of it. This is one of the most infuriating ants in our collection, the Mimesia nigriscarpa. This queen has raised two sets of eggs up to cocoons, and just as they were almost ready to hatch, she either threw them out or ripped them open. But she is still a really captivating queen to watch with her unique personality and aggressive behaviours. This species is one of the prettiest, with its dark red body covered in a purple hue to its bright orange abdomen, band and mandibles. Here we have a small colony of Mimesia tarsata. This species takes a lot of patience to raise the workers. It took 10 months for us to grow this humble colony to the size they are today. This is one of our other queens. You can see she has a cocoon up the back and a horde of larvae munching on a dead cricket. They are voracious eaters, so the queen must leave the nest and forage for them constantly. This beautiful species is Mimesia full vibes. Since their last appearance, they have raised two more healthy workers. This species is a gem among Australian ant keepers because of their beauty and rarity. However, we were lucky enough to get our hands on a second, much larger queen. Besides having a broken leg, she seems like quite a healthy queen. Here is a size comparison between the two. You can really see how big the single queen is compared to the colony. This is the largest species of ant in Australia, the Mimesia brevinoda. We have a few colonies of these giants, but this is the largest. Although, the queen hasn't laid any new eggs after her first generation arrived, which was strange as all our other Mimesia colonies have laid eggs after their cocoons hatched. This species is nocturnal and surprisingly timid, darting away at the first sign of danger. Now this species is one we have kept a secret from you guys here on YouTube, the Mimesia chrysogaster. This species has incredible colours, from its golden gaster to its red petiole and thorax markings. They are found in Queensland, and many species found in this state exhibit vibrant colours, largely due to its tropical climate. Tropical regions often support more colourful wildlife, as these adaptations are common in such environments. Here we have a Mimesia pilaventris queen. This striking black and gold queen is currently caring for two cocoons and a batch of eggs. She is quite a stressful queen and ripped open her previous cocoons due to stress. Hopefully being filmed doesn't stress her out too much. This is a small colony of Mimesia rufinotus, a species that comes from South Australia and Kangaroo Island. This species is quite rare, but very beautiful with its deep black base with a bright red petiole and shiny yellow mandibles. Some queens also have patches of orange along their thorax. This small colony is doing alright, having two workers but no brood. At one stage, they did have eggs, but they were unfortunately eaten. This is Mimesia similima, a unique species as they have different colour morphs. What this means is that they can be different colours but still be the same species. This is the red morph, as is obvious by their colours. And this is the dark morph, 
which is the most common colour in our area. This is our biggest colony. They live in a large naturalistic setup, with many other insects and arachnids. Next up is one of the largest species in Australia, the Mamesia pyroformis. These dark brown bollants are not only large, but very aggressive. Despite being smaller than the Brevinota, they are much more aggressive. Where the Brevinota would hide, the pyroformis would rush out and attack, stinging everything it perceives as a threat, sometimes even the test tube they are living in. This is a colony of Mimesia SB17. They are one of the most aggressive colonies we own, charging at us while we attempt to place food in their outworld. Although, these girls have a soft spot for honey. They absolutely love the stuff, stopping whatever they're doing to try to get a taste. A lot of you will remember this colony from our rare ants video, from which they've done exceptionally well, recently getting their fifth generation of workers, which brings their total up to 20. This number won't stay the same for long though, as they have a massive brood pile with over 20 cocoons and lots of larvae of all sizes. We are very excited to share this colony's progress with you guys as they continue to grow. Here we have our largest Mimesia nigrosincta colony. This active colony has around 50 workers at the time of recording, with one more hatching almost every day. This species is also known as jack jumpers. As that name suggests, they can jump up to 10 centimeters. They are also a very hungry colony, eating one or more large crickets a day. These tiny bull ants are Mimesia urines. They are one of the smallest Mimesia species, with the queens only measuring in at around 10 millimeters in length. They are found in eucalypt forests, where they can forage within the leaf litter hunting tiny insects. Mimesia urens is a species of bull ant that is known to be able to be polygynous, meaning they can have multiple queens in their colonies. They are also a species with different colour morphs, so one day I would love to get a colony with two different coloured queens, which would result in a multicoloured colony. Here is our stunning Mimesia golosa colony. This colony is doing really well having one worker and 10 large larvae, which have begun to pupate, which is very exciting. This colony is very interesting, as the queen and worker periodically take turns to leave the test tube and forage for insects for their voracious larvae. The last bull ant on our list is one we only recently acquired, the Mimesia fuscites. This species is known from the patterning on top of the queen's thorax. This queen has a different diet to our other Mimesia queens, Instead of eating honey, she opts for sugar water. Not sure why, but this diet can be different depending on species. This queen doesn't currently have any eggs, but we are sure she will lay some soon. Until then, we will leave her completely undisturbed. Now we have pony ants, starting with Rytidopinera metai, the most common species under this genus. These ants can be found in almost every state or territory. The reason for this great range lies in their exoskeleton. These ants are reinforced with armour, allowing them to survive the desert heat. We've had this colony for a bit over a year now, and they have around 20 workers. But they have a massive cocoon pile, which should double their population. This is Rytidopinera chalybea, a species that primarily lives in wood namely rotting logs, where they build small colonies of only about 250 workers or so. This species is quite hard to raise in captivity, as the queens have a weird trait of randomly killing and eating their workers in the founding stage. We have no idea why they do this, but us and some of our mates have never been able to raise them. Hopefully this time we'll have success. Lastly, we have the Rytidopinera victoriae. These small ants are a very placid species, and are often left alone by larger ones. As we have mentioned previously, we have observed them entering the nest of Mimesia nigrosincta and being left unharmed. This makes them a great species to add to terrariums. Not only are they generally left alone, they are also great scavengers, eating any scraps left by other creatures. That was part one of the room tour. 
Next week, we'll have an array of different species, such as sugar ants, big headed ants, and much more. Thank you for watching this video. It took a lot of work to produce. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and let us know what your favorite species in the video was in the comments. Until next time, I'll see you later.